years ago, a man was traveling along a riverbank in southern Iran. He saw something glistening. It turned out to be a priceless vase from ancient Persia. The discoveries at Jiroft are astonishing in terms of the, the quantity and quality of materials that have been excavated, mainly illegally, unfortunately. This amateur footage shows what happened next as hundreds of treasure hunters swarmed over Jiroft. They dug up buried riches, ancient art that made their finders fortunes. But some now think what they discovered was much more important than treasure. The frenzied prospectors had actually revealed relics from a lost city. Had these people inadvertently found the birthplace of human society? If they had, it would go against conventional wisdom. It's always been thought that civilization started in either Mesopotamia, now in Iraq, or in the Indus Valley, now in India and Pakistan. But legends speak of an even earlier kingdom called Arata. No traces of it have ever been found. This film follows the archaeologist given the task of excavating Giraffe in search of this lost realm. His job, to assess the evidence and perhaps reveal a mythical city, the capital of the kingdom of Arata, the first civilization. As soon as I read about it, I bubbled over with excitement because I think this could be the biggest archaeological story in my time. Jiroff, where the treasure surfaced, is on one of the most used heroin routes from Afghanistan. Experienced smugglers quickly converged on the town. For a handful of dollars, they were able to buy objects for which Western art collectors eagerly paid hundreds of thousands of pounds. An entire year passed before the Iranian authorities grasped the scale of the traffic in relics. Early in 2001, the police launched a major operation to shut down the illegal trade. One arrest alone led to the seizure of 200 items. But who could identify the stolen goods and assess their value? The authorities sent for Yusuf Majitsadeh. For the professor of archaeology, the summons was especially sweet. In 1984, he'd been accused of being a counter-revolutionary and forced to leave the country of his birth. Eighteen years later, Professor Majitsadeh was the one man from Iran with a detailed knowledge of ancient Eastern art. Even he was totally taken aback. The first time when I saw these objects, I had almost a heart attack. I had a heart attack. Oh, my heart stopped. It was not easy to trace the source of the items. Looting had been widespread. Poverty meant that whole families turned into grave robbers. <laughs> This morning, the schoolmistress asked me for 10 pence for fees. I just don't have the money. The professor faced some huge challenges to get the local people on his side, to discover what lay beneath centuries of mud, and to find clues to an unknown ancient civilization. He had a checklist of things to look for. Had the mysterious people built large buildings? Was there any evidence they had farmed, proof they kept animals or grew crops? Did they engage in trade? Had they left records of transactions or traces of writing? And did their works of art contain clues, signs of a culture rich in images and stories?
he had a long wish list, one that initially looked doomed to bitter disappointment. It had taken the Iranian authorities several months to regain control of the region. When at last the professor arrived, he discovered the robbers had laid waste to whole cemeteries. He found huge numbers of graves had been plundered and emptied. Large numbers of people had been buried here. Who were they? How developed had their culture been? The stolen grave goods offered few clues, wrenched from their owners and their surroundings. It was pillage on a scale which was every archaeologist's worst nightmare. Archaeologists are always unhappy when sites are looted because it means that objects are taken out of context. Culture without context, I think, is, is the key phrase there because we have the objects, but we've no idea what they were associated with. We have lost uh, a great amount of information, not only the objects, but lots of information. We don't have any skeleton, any bones that we can study, nothing at all. We don't know who they were. We don't know what was their relation to one another. We don't know the diseases. We don't know their religion. Sad, very sad. The three largest looted cemeteries were close to each other. Overlooking them was a pair of mysterious mounds. Their surface was littered with scattered shards of pottery, 5,000 years old. The mounds themselves were exceptionally large. Professor Matizade had a hunch they held a secret, but even he who believed in the ancient kingdom of Arata could not have foreseen what they concealed. High in southeastern Iran is a major archaeological discovery a hidden valley where conditions are ideal for civilization to have appeared. And it sits halfway between the two traditional cradles of civilization, Mesopotamia, now in Iraq, and the Indus Valley, reaching up into India and Pakistan. Western archaeologists had paid scant attention to this 400-kilometer-long strip of land. Just one small mound had been partially excavated. Here, barely 30 kilometers south of Giraffe, where the valley is at its widest, destitute local people had unearthed the most valuable cups and vases. The motifs etched in the soft stone were not just outstanding examples of skill, they also offered a sudden solution to a mystery that had long baffled scholars. Professor Majidzade was well aware that fragments of objects with similar designs had been found throughout the ancient world. A thousand kilometers distant in Mesopotamia, in Oman on the Arabian Peninsula, along the banks of the Indus, even as far away as Afghanistan. The professor knew that their source was an enigma. The sheer number recovered in this valley and their similarity allowed the professor to solve the riddle. The pieces had to have come from here at Giraffe. And to his delight, they surpassed Mesopotamian art. I cannot explain how exciting was seeing those objects. For the first time in my life, I was seeing something which was against what I had learned all through my life in archaeology. I saw something which doesn't exist in Mesopotamia, much more uh, elaborate than Mesopotamian art. The professor was forced to an astounding conclusion. The treasures must have come from an earlier civilization, one more highly developed than Mesopotamian society perhaps from the very kingdom of Arata itself. 
شنیدم بعضی گفتن که تمدن بزرگ همین خاموشی هاست ما گفتیم تازه یازده سال دیگه میرسیم به دروازه های تمدن بزرگ یعنی زیر بنای مملکت باید طوری بسازیم که از هر لحاظ قوام و استحکام مملکت برقرار بشه و از لحاظ کشاورزی از لحاظ تکنولوژی از لحاظ صنعت برسیم به پای ممالک پیشرفته دنیا بعد بعد از اون مرحله برسیم به اینکه تمام فلسفه 17 ماده انقلاب ما بتوانیم پیاده بکنیم یعنی یه ایرانی از روزی که به دنیا میاد تا روزی که از دنیا میره این در واقع بیمه شده باشه در مقابل هر چیزی هیچ اتفاقی نباید او را از یه زندگی شرافتمندانه سالم خوشبختی محروم بکنه بلکه به عکس تمام اقدامات، تمام پیشبینی ها، تمام ابتکارات برای این است که یک فرد ایرانی یه فرد زنده خوشبختی باشه اگر تمام کارهای ما تکمیل شده بود که نمی گفتیم تازه یازده سال دیگه می رسیم به دروازه های تمدن بزرگ یعنی خیلی کار مونده یازده سال کار در این مملکت که نمونهش حالا نه فقط برنامه پنج ساله است که سال دیگه تمام میشه ولی همین بودجه امسال در نظر بگیرید که این بودجه نمایانگر چه فعالیت های عظیمی است در تمام رشته ها این است که این لفظ فکر میکنم که خیلی باید بیشتر باش با احترام فکر کرد احترام آینده، احترام سرنوشت، احترام که همون اندازه که علاقه داریم به بزرگ شدن و خوشبخت شدن بچه های ما به همون اندازه به این موضوع باید ما توجه بکنیم و خودمونه برای این کار آماده بکنیم و این تمدن بزرگی که ما میگیم در آینده باید بهش برسیم این کار شبان روزی و فعالیت و زحمت و دلسوزی همه را لازم داره و لاب در یه سینی گذاشتن و در طبق اخلاص هر کسی قرار دادن تا یه حدی ممکنه و اون ساختن مملکتی اما تکمیلش با فرد فرد ایرانی است که اگر توجه داشته باشه میرسیم و زودتر هم میرسیم ولی اگر بخواد خب با لاغبالیگری و مسخره بازی و این قبیل حرفا مسلمن دیرتر به مقصد خواهیم رسیم هم کشاورزیمونو باید تکمیل بکنیم و هم صنعت و تکنولوژی هر دو باعث تولید می شود تولیدی که یک روزی باید جایگزین نفت بشه ولی تا موقعی که نفت داریم نفت باید به حد اکثر به خوبی مورد استفاده قرار بگیریم برای اینکه در واقع هر چی که از این درآمد به دست ما می رسه برای سازندگی مملکت و برای تولید سروت های آینده مملکت خرج بشه برای اینکه تمام دستگاه ها خودشون نقاط ضعف خودشون ببینن هم هیئت هایی باید فرستاد برای بازرسی و هم اینا میدونن که اون گزارشی که بدن ما روی اون گزارش اقدام میکنیم و یه چیز سرسری سرهمبندی شده نمیتوانن بدن البته این موضوع با, با مبارزه با فساد جداست مبارزه با فساد یه امریز دائمی ارتباطی به این امر نداره این برای تشکیلات یعنی هر چی که زائد باد زد هر چی که کهنه است و مطابق احتیاجات روز نیست باید عوض بشه در بعضی تشکیلات فوری رسیدن و شاید از وزیر دارایی سوال بکنید که از چند هزار نفر فورا فهمیدن که فرض بکنید مثل میزن دقیق نیست این حرف فرض بکنید مثلا از ده هزار نفر پی بردن که شاید سه هزار نفر زیادی با خصوص با این اوتومیشنی که ما در کارها میخواییم بدیم تمام کارها ما باید بره توی کامپیوتر فوق العاده این در آینده موثر خواهد بود منتا باید به فکر این بود که خب افراد زایده یا جابجا جا بکنیم یا بازنشسته هستن یا بازخرید بکنن یا اینکه به کارهایی که جدیدن تأسیس میشه به اونجا ها معمور بکنم ولی مبارزه با فساد یک امریست دائمی 
از بالاترین مقامات مملکتی ما میگیریم اگر خطایی بکنن و تسلیم ادالت میکنیم حالا ادالت ما تا چه حدی سریع عمل بکنه مطلب دیگر است تا اشخاص عادی شاید الان صدها یا حتی هزار خوردهی پرونده در جریان یک چیز ایرانی نباید اشتباه بکنه موضوع فساد و دزدی با پول در آوردن از راه کار اگر یک کسی کار کرد زحمت کشید پول در آورد میلیاردر شد به شرطی که مالیاتش به پردازه این باید مورد علاقه هر کسی باشه ولی نه اینکه ما بی خودی حسادت بکنیم به کسی که از راه صحیح و به اصطلاح جان کندن پول در آورده پس چیکار میخواهید بکنن برن یه مملکت دیگه مهاجرت بکنن اونجا تازه از راه فعالیت شدید به جای برسن خوب چرا مملکت خودشون نکنن این کار پس این دو موضوع کاملا از هم جدا بکنه پول در آوردن از راه شرافت و کار و پرداخت مالیات و اون فساد که خب البته دزدی و دقلی و هرزگی است و اون ما نمیبخشیم اون یکی رو اتفاقا باید تشویق بکنیم کما اینکه چند سال پیش من اینه گفتم ادالت بعضی ها گفتن در ایران در این است که چون اون موقع میگفتن امیدی نیست که ایران به جای برسه پس ادالت در بدبختی همه است در بیچارگی همه است در فقر همه است حالا اسمشو نمیارم که اینه گفته مرده من میگم امروز ادالت در ایران در رفاه همه است و وسایلی باید فراهم بکنیم که هر کسی که یه قدری غیرت داشت و یه قدری کار داشت به رفاه حتمی برسه از اون بالاتر هرچی بیشتر گیرش اومد به قول معروف چه بهتر ولی باز هم به همون شرط پرداخت مالیات حقه قانونی